Hey guys, what is up? It is M here. Welcome or welcome back. I hope you guys are doing good whenever this reading finds you. And I hope you're staying safe, especially those of you guys in the south that are um, in the path of the hurricane. I kind of am. I'm more on the outside of it, but we're still going to get hit by it regardless. Um, it's actually on its way right now as I'm recording this. So cross your fingers that we don't lose power and that my plants outside do not take flight and leave with Miss Helene. <laughs> okay. So today I wanted to do a reading looking at the next change that would be taking place in your life since we've been getting so many messages about some sort of change transition or transformation that you guys are undergoing or that you will be experiencing now and in the near future. So that is what we are going to be tapping into today. This reading of course is timeless, so whenever you see it that is when it should apply for you, but we could pick up on past, present, future energy or messages. Now obviously we may be tapping more into the present and the future because we're looking at what is coming next, but we can still get messages about the past as well if it's relevant and it's general too so take what resonates for you leave the rest you guys know your story best try not to take it personally if something does not end up resonate it may not be your message but it could be for somebody else here and if anybody else pops into your reading today i could say you and it could be another person i could talk about another person and you may resonate with that position just put yourself where you fit there and yeah what is that? Everything is linked down below for you guys per usual and we are going to get on into your pile selection. So we have three different groups that you guys can choose from and as always if you feel called or drawn to more than one group go with what feels right for you. There may be some additional messages there. So group one be here, group two, and group three. And if you need more time to select your group or groups, feel free to pause this video, take as much time as you guys need, and I will see each of you at your reading. Hey, group one, for those of you guys that selected the first card, this is going to be your reading looking at the next change taking place in your life. So I have some additional cards, but before we get into these, let's look at your main card first. And this is going to show us the main theme or the main energy of this change. You guys have Hearth Homecoming. So right off the bat, you guys likely are going to be moving or relocating. Or there is something that is going to be changing entirely about your space. So you could be making a big move um, across states, I'm hearing. Some of you guys, you may be moving out of the state that you're in now, you could be moving out of your hometown, or some of you that have been away from your hometown, you could be moving back. It depends. Um, but a majority of you guys, you are going to be picking up and moving and relocating to a new home, a new space, um, a completely new and different area, but you have some sort of deep ties to this. And even if you've never physically been to this new place you could be going, this new location, it's almost as if your soul recognizes this place. And I feel like energetically speaking, whatever space you go to next, it feels like a perfect match for you. It feels like you're in your element. And in this space, it is going to seem like suddenly everything is unblocked and flowing more effortlessly. Like there isn't going to be um, any restrictions. It's not going to feel like you're constantly met with like this um, stuck energy or these bumps or these hurdles like where it feels like you're constantly going against the grain and it's uncomfortable and it feels like you have to always push your way through to just make progress or to build even a little bit everything's going to happen very effortlessly in this place and even if where you go or how you're living 
right? It could be unconventional or alternative. You're going to be experiencing a lot of comfort, a lot of stability. It's going to feel cozy. You're going to be able to actually relax and settle. And that may be something that you guys haven't have felt for a long time. There could also be someone that you will be visiting or someone may be visiting you. For those of you where this isn't a move, even though I feel like for 99.9% .9 of you it will be, <laughs> um, some form of relocation, you could be welcoming somebody your way or vice versa. There could be something about embracing a person, likely somebody you already know, or somebody that knows you, but there could be a return of a connection for some. So let's take a look at the cards that you guys got over here. I'm gonna start with the tea leaf ones. You have the eye, psychic ability, trust your intuition. So your guys' intuition likely has already been signaling this to you, like you've already been getting a feeling about this, whether it has been that you felt, okay, I'm moving, I'm relocating. Um, you've sensed this change. It may feel restless. It may feel as though there's an upheaval or that you, again, can't get comfortable. You have carriage, a journey, either physical or mental. Okay. And you guys are absolutely embarking on a new journey. And this can represent travel. Physical travel or transportation. You have eagle. This is such a positive omen. Whenever I get an eagle as a sign or a message or like this card specifically, you guys don't understand. This is such a positive omen. Triumph over troubles and obstacles. Where you are going to next, you're going to experience so much peace and it's going to feel as though a lot of your problems are just naturally being solved on their own because you're moving out of a place that you are not in alignment with. You're moving away from people that you're not in alignment with. You're moving away from a lifestyle that you are not in alignment with. Whatever it is, you are not a match for a particular place or space or people or something. It almost feels as though you're kind of being forced out. And you may feel as though you're being kind of like pushed through a vacuum. It feels tight, it feels uncomfortable. And you're getting closer and closer to this transition. And that's likely why things feel more tense or why you're getting a greater sense of anticipation, or you will. You have abandoned plantation, dismantling and ugly truths. Yeah, so I feel like you guys are leaving something behind in pursuit of something better, of something healthier, I just heard. Because with dismantling and ugly truths, I feel like you guys have been in a place where you've been triggered by a lot of things. You have been forced to address certain things. For some of you, you've been around certain people that may trigger certain wounds, um, patterns, cycles within you, or maybe that created certain wounds within you. There may be certain things that you have just discovered about yourself or those around you or um, the place that you're in, the life you've been living. It feels as though there's a lot that you've had to face and come to terms with, but I don't really feel that this is directed at you or like the ugly truth has to do with you. I think it's you being forced to face reality and see things clearly exactly as they are without the illusions. It's like what's being dismantled are the illusions. Some of you guys could even have been in a relationship or um, a certain dynamic or a home where on the outside seemingly things seem perfect right but on the inside there could be a lot of toxicity 
there could be a lot of hurts. These cycles, they run deep. You have winter and ending, recharging and reflection. Yeah, so when you move away from this thing, this place, these people, you're going to be in a space where you can finally, again, heal, relax, and rest. So, yes, there is an ending, but with every ending, there is a beginning. And I feel like the ending, it's not just about the move or the transition and like the leaving something behind, right? It's about having to accept that things are not the way that you thought they were, that they're not how they looked or appeared or it's like once you see something for what it is, you can't unsee it. So there may be a period of mourning with that where you realize, man, this is how this person really is, or this is how they really feel about me. This is what they think of me. Or man, this is how my life has been. What I've dealt with, what I've gone through, it's like there's this acceptance phase, but also a period of mourning, but celebration too, because it's going to feel as though you're finally free, that you're being liberated from this. And the eagle is not like a small, insignificant omen. This is a very like auspicious sign, a powerful sign that you really are going to prevail and be victorious. So let's pull some more cards figure out what deck I want to use. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. What deck do I want to use? Start with this one. Do some tarot first. Group one, what is the next change that they are going to embark on that they're going to wow yeah so you have the king of axes the king of swords and then you have the ten of wands in reverse which for me would represent laying your burdens down um letting go of the heaviness, the weight, the pressure that has been suffocating you. Look at how tired he is. He looks exhausted, he looks fatigued. And there's more like behind the imagery. This deck is um, inspired by or was created after Over the Garden Wall. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Whenever I talk about it, I feel so silly, but it's one of my most favorite shows of all time. There's so much depth, so much symbolism, so many hidden meanings. So if you watch it, you would like understand the cards a lot more. But the character here, the woodsman, he is constantly, day after day, night after night, he is cutting down these trees, these branches, collecting them, and burning or turning them into oil to use for this lantern. And he has this pressure to keep the flame lit, to keep it alive, right? And this specific um, lantern is said to have the soul of his daughter in it. So she's like the flame, her soul is a flame. And the antagonist in the show, known as the beast, which is similar to like the devil archetype, tells him that in order to keep her soul alive, he has to cut down these trees, turn them into oil, and use the oil for the lantern or else when the flame goes out, she's gone. So 
again, he goes day and night doing whatever he can to try and keep this lantern lit, but he didn't realize that the whole time he was feeding and fueling the beast. So his intentions were pure and he was doing whatever he could to keep the peace, right? Essentially, and to please and to try and maintain stability and specifically protect his child, which he believed was the flame. Her soul was a flame, but it was actually the beast and his spirit that was within the lantern. So the whole time, the woodsman is just feeding the lantern that is keeping the beast alive. So that's what I mean with the dismantling and the ugly truths of realizing, like maybe you're seeing somebody's true motives or true intentions, like um, maybe there has been deception, there has been trickery. Maybe you feel as though you've just been used, like you're just being used by other people to be of service to them and then you're discarded and you're disposed of. But once you move away and transition out of this place, that won't be the case anymore. The Three of Swords Reverse is being able to free yourself from this heartache and this pain. Something that like repeatedly was was the word I'm looking for? Something that you repeatedly endured and had to experience. What is the next change coming their way for group one? I'm so excited for you guys. I can't even explain it. Like the amount of excitement I'm feeling right now when I keep looking at that eagle card, I just feel it. Like I can envision how things are going to go for you guys. It'll be different for all of you, but I can see it's like, as soon as you're out and away and it's like the door is closed, suddenly everything comes in. Like you guys could suddenly receive a lot more money. Um, your career, your business could be thriving. You could meet the love of your life. It's like everything seemingly will go well for you. Yeah, so the Two of Cups reverse with the Knight of Pentacles reverse is, to me, would symbolize an imbalance within a connection where there's not um, genuine love and support. It's just a person that is taking, taking, taking. No matter what a person does, how hard they work, how hard they try, it would never be good enough. It feels like someone continuously trying to feed into a situation and there's just never any growth. It's just like talking to a brick wall. So whether this is a job or a relationship, platonic, romantic, familial, um, it could be more than one relation, relationship too, right? It could be regarding multiple connections. It could just be the space that you're in, the environment that you're in. I mean, I think it's a combination of things but this definitely has hurt your heart and you're going to be free from this soon let's get a couple more i'm just hearing everybody wanted to laugh right like everybody wanted to laugh or make a mockery or like judge you criticize you but I don't even think they realize what's coming for you either. But it doesn't matter because what's going to happen is when you experience this victory, you may have people that want to pop up and get in your good graces and want to see if they could benefit off of that, right? But you're going to have a certain person or other people and this is where, again, it hurts the most, where it's like, doesn't matter if you're a billionaire, um, doesn't matter if you're like <laughs> saving lives, it doesn't matter like what you're doing, how you're doing, you could be the greatest person in the world, the kindest person, the most honest person. 
and it still wouldn't be good enough. And it's because this person is never satisfied and never fulfilled and they project this onto others because this is how they really feel about themselves. You have the wands, the entire suit of wands. So this is going to bring a lot of passion and creativity and excitement and swiftness. This is going to be fast paced. This also is representing you overcoming a massive obstacle, a major chapter. And it's funny that you have the Queen of Pentacles, the King of Pentacles, both coming out cross with this in between. I feel like in this space, you're going to be building a bond with a specific person. You could be meeting somebody new, or there could be an expansion of a connection that is taking place. There is something that is going to be connecting, linking, and bonding you to another, another person. It's almost as if you both have gone through similar things. Yeah, you have the Empress. And this is kind of like the um, story card almost. But it says, what caught my eye was the very beginning. This deck would not have been made without the continued support of the community. And you have the Empress. You are going to be rewarded. There's so much love and abundance and support that is going to be exchanged. You're going to be receiving help through other people. You're going to be experiencing massive amounts of growth. And for those of you, if you do work on social media, then this can talk about you gaining a lot of traction, gaining a lot of attention. Because again, notice how it said this would not have been made without the continued support of the community. And this can even be talking about you, like, as the empress or the emperor whatever position you'd resonate with right and for those of you guys that aren't familiar this is like the highest position you could be in in tarot at least i see it that way one of the highest positions you can be in like the most empowered um the most abundant the most fulfilled the most respected and there's a lot of maturity and experience that comes with this position as an emperor or an empress there's authority there's dedication. So I almost feel like it's also saying too that this doesn't just reflect the support that will be coming your way. This also is talking about how these experiences have built you up to the position that you are at now. And when I say that, that's not me saying like, oh, this had to happen to you or it should have happened or whatever. No. Um, I don't believe that. I don't believe that you had to be mistreated in order to get to this point, but you're going to see this situation from a different perspective, and I feel like you're going to be more grateful for the lessons and the experiences, especially when you're at this place, because you're going to finally feel content with the position that you're in. You're going to feel content and fulfilled with your life. You have the star. Yeah. So star and temperance and death. Trust in walking away. Trust in this transition that is taking place where you are leaving this behind because it's for the better. It's for your own good staying in this or around this or whatever is just going to be um, affecting you in a very destructive and harmful way. So trust your intuition where you feel guided. If your intuition has been telling you that this is coming, this is a confirmation of that, but they want you to know that it's going to work out in an amazing way. So if you're stressed about it, you're not sure how it's going to happen, like they're saying miracles happen every day. This is going to be your miracle, okay? That is what I have for you. Group one, let me know your thoughts and feelings down below. I hope this helped. 
and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey group two, for those of you guys that selected the second card, this is going to be your reading, looking at the next change taking place in your life. So before we get into your extra cards that I pulled for you, let's look at your main card. And this is going to tell us the main energy of this change, okay? So you guys have Lord and God, masculine. So this change could be involving a masculine, um, somebody that may come off as more masculine. Now this is like stereotypically speaking in terms of um, like characteristics and things like that. I don't really like separating by feminine or masculine because I feel like it just creates so many issues and complexes for people. But we do have the energy of the masculine coming through and this may again be representing a specific person this could also be representing you maybe you are entering a chapter or a phase a time where you are going to be more driven taking more action you're going to be more ambitious um finding your own authority right gaining respect so if this isn't talking about another person, then this can be representing you as well. You specifically as an individual, maybe with your identity, maybe with your personal goals, um, the path that you're on in life. This is talking about you undergoing a change if it's not another person. Now, for those of you where this is another person, they're saying that this change, um, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? This person holds a major significance when it comes to the change that will be taking place. This may be somebody you know, it could be somebody that you are going to be meeting. Let's see, you have the flag. It says, do not be tempted to lower your standards. Interesting. Ooh, you have March and you have love. Okay, so something could be happening or taking place in March. Someone's birthday could be in March, okay? You may be meeting this person in March. There may be romance in March. And this could also just be reflecting the energy of spring. So newness, um, fresh start, new beginnings, new life, new growth, planting new seeds. But you have love here, okay? So there is something about um, your love life that is about to change. Now with do not be tempted to lower your standards. I'm hearing don't settle. Like you have a particular person that is coming in that is going to be meeting your standards and more. Um, someone that is going to be like a dream person for you. So don't settle for less before this person enters your life. And be careful of falling into past patterns where maybe you did lower your standards just to kind of like make other people happy or keep certain people around. You have summer, okay, expansion and growth. I don't know why I like keep wanting to cover this up. <laughs> expansion and growth. This may also be involving another person that may want to pop up into your life group too. There may be, I just heard, um, a repeat offender, somebody that may like to come around periodically that you could have had a relationship with or there could be feelings or situationship or something. Um, maybe this person is in and out, they're flighty. They may say certain things but not follow through. It's like their words and their actions don't match up. So you have something really beautiful coming in and a person that can really love you in the way that you deserve to be loved and cherished and taken care of and vice versa. But you have another energy that may pop in and try and lurk and I don't know, this person may be like a weakness for you or 
you may just notice that certain people will pop up and want to like throw you off your path because this person is in your life or entering your life. So pay attention to that. You have cruelty and you have deep fears. So some of you guys, <laughs> uh, some of you, okay, I'm calling you out. You may have fears when it comes to love and you may at times self-sabotage um, because you're trying to protect yourself and prevent certain things from happening. Now, likely this stems from a place of being in a position previously where you could have been mistreated, taken advantage of, you could have been abused, you could have been in a toxic or unhealthy relationship or connection or cycle. There's something that would be driving or fueling these fears, but it almost seems as though true love, genuine love, like that scares you more for some reason. Maybe you're afraid of sabotaging it, or maybe you're afraid of something going wrong or something getting in the way. Maybe you felt you had this previously and things kind of crumbled and fell apart. So you may be in a fragile space where you do not want to open yourself up to something like that again, or you're hesitant to connect in general because you don't want to experience heartbreak, which makes total sense, you know? So be compassionate with yourself. But I do see this next change, there's going to be a lot of growth when it comes to a particular connection entering your life, or there could be, right? Things are always subject to change. It depends on the path that you choose, but this person is coming in. Let's get some more. I feel like I should use a different tarot deck, so give me one second. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to do Hocus Pocus for you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, let's see. Group two. What is this next change that's coming into their life? You have the Two of Cups reversed. You have the Six of Cups. And you have the Queen of Candles. Okay, listen. <laughs> listen, listen. I'm telling you, there's a past person that may pop up or you may want to pop up in somebody else's life. There's something about a past connection, past situation, past love, something that is affecting you today or is going to pop up in the future, especially with the Six of Cups. This is nostalgia. This is the energy of reconciliation, having deep ties or deep roots when it comes to something or someone. So there is history here. There's history here. And you may be tempted, okay? Like it says, it says, do not be tempted to lower your standards. You may be tempted by someone, but you should not settle for less. You're just going to wind up trapped in a cycle again. It's going to lead to the same thing. It feels like this person, for those of you where this is a repeat offender, where they pop up continuously, it seems like they pop up in your life when you start doing well, when you start feeling okay by yourself, or when you're involved with other people. So that's a sign, okay, that this person should be cut out of your life because they're just trying to prevent you from moving on and Gaining the confidence and the self-love to move forward and disconnect from them completely. They're preying on certain insecurities that you may have. So be careful with this. 
I think that this past person's going to pop up first before this new energy comes in. reverse yeah so this is a manipulator this is a charmer this is somebody that is going to sell you the dreams and the fantasies be the white knight want to come in and sweep you off your feet but there's nothing real behind it it's just a tactic to get you to be vulnerable and to trap you and the ace of candles again. There's too many cards. You have the king of candles. Yeah. <laughs> this person's a charmer. They're a charmer. They're going to want to come in and seem like they're ready for something new. They're going to come in with the passion and the excitement and the fire, but many cards I would just cut this person out yeah you have the six of lightning and the six of swords being able to detach from this detach from the situation and being able to detach from the illusions and the mental and emotional manipulation from this person what is coming next what change is coming next so maybe this person is like a test for you to see if you really are at a point or at a place where you are valuing yourself more, where you are respecting yourself more, where you see and understand how worthy and how precious you really are. Or if there's still certain wounds or triggers or patterns that you need to address and face and work through that this person or this type of person they're able to trigger because when you're at a place where you feel completely validated on your own independently like you validate yourself and you're not relying on other people to validate you you wouldn't even want this so there's a part of you that wants this, it's because of that like runner chaser dynamic, that trigger. And it's just unhealthy for you. I don't see this as a separation for those of you that are in a relationship. If you're in a relationship and it's healthy and you're happy and things are going great then I would just see this as a warning of a past person on either just side trying to pop up and come through and just be irritating because there is a um, next step that you're going to be taking in your love life you have the nine of wands yeah be weary be cautious this is using your past experiences using that wisdom that you have gained to tread carefully to tread lightly to make the best decision for you four of swords I think that this person or this type of person they really play on your heart and your dreams and your desires like this is somebody that could have said like oh we'll have a family oh we'll have kids oh we'll get married like and this could also be somebody that you've been connected to for an extremely long time they may feel like family especially if you've known them since your childhood or your adolescence or at a point in your life where maybe you felt um more vulnerable or maybe you're more naive more there is an innocence there. There's something that you may hold on to subconsciously when it comes to this person and something that they weaponize against you 
Um, and it's hurtful and it's wrong. So I'm going to use another deck to pick up on this other person's energy because I feel like I can't even use the same deck without this past person coming through. So this new person is going to be far more mature. They're going to know exactly what they want. This isn't somebody that's going to play games. They don't have time to play games, I'm hearing. So this is somebody that means what they say and they follow through. Which makes sense that we have that energy of the Lord God masculine come through. It's like the emperor energy. Being in their healthiest, highest position, being in their prime. Somebody that has worked heavily on themselves. I don't want to read on this person. Go away. My God. Tell me about the new person, <laughs> please. Not this past person. Tell me about the new person. Okay. <laughs> the reason why they're not talking about the new energy so much is because you have to address this door first before you can reach the next one. You have to face this and put this to an end first and really close the door, close that cycle and chapter before you can unlock this new door with this person behind it. Because if not, if you meet this new person now and this other energy pops up, there's a possibility that you may sabotage it. And you may not realize what a blessing this new person is because you may be holding on to the illusion or the dream or the idea of what this other person could be or what they're saying or selling. So in order to prevent you from sabotaging this, they will not enter or you will not cross paths or even if you already know this person, a relationship won't take place for the long term until you deal with this person and face this person. So. Um, I want to see what will happen if they close the door, they end this chapter, this cycle, for good. If they put it behind them for good. Tell me about this other energy here. If they end this cycle for good. Tell me about this other energy here. You guys are afraid to end it though. There's something you're afraid of. I don't know if you're afraid of being alone. I don't know if you're afraid of making the wrong choice if you've invested a lot of time or energy. Um, and there's nothing wrong with loving or caring for this person. So I don't want you guys to feel like I'm judging you and being hard on you. But I wanna see you guys be happy and be fulfilled and you can still love somebody and not be connected to them and keep them at a distance, right? So the Ace of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles here. They finally close the door on this person, on this situation, then what comes next? I think this was like peeping what could come next if you do this. Almost as encouragement for you to really like solidify some sort of ending. So you have the Knight of Pentacles and the Hang Woman. I feel, again, it would take some time for you, though, to um, recover from this and heal from it just because this is something, again, that has just deeply affected you. And you may be, depending on this person, the relationship, the circumstances surrounding it, this could have been your person or you thought it was going to be your person your life partner and that thought of I don't even know if I would want to experience this again I don't even know if I would want to connect with anybody else I don't know if I want to go through this process like that's something that would be debated so I think the change that you are going to be undergoing one is centered around yourself and finding peace and comfort in your own independence and building up your self-esteem more and discovering who you are more, connecting with yourself more, and also addressing and facing 
a particular connection that has been very toxic and unhealthy for you. If you close that door, then with time you have this dream person coming through. But if not, then you may find yourself in a repeated cycle or pattern either with this person or somebody similar, okay? So I wanna get you guys more card because I feel like your reading was a bit, <laughs> it's a lot of tough love. But I'm not going to sugarcoat anything and spin it in a way that's not authentic. I want you guys to get the messages you need, even if it's something that you may not want to hear. So, <laughs> why? <gasps> oh, you guys are funny. Why? But why? I just told you why told you why you need to let this person go or maybe you're asking why why is this happening why didn't it work why you're going to get the answers to your question or questions in time sit and be with yourself in the present moment and really listen to what you're feeling instead of trying to make sense of things that don't make sense just tend to yourself Nurture yourself, take care of yourself. What is it that you need? What is it that you're lacking? How can you best support yourself at this time? Can I get another one for group two? Well, to be fair, <laughs> uh, you guys are funny. I'm not laughing at you. I can just feel the sass and the um, sarcasm in this group. So to be fair, and then you have come to the edge. So let me grab the book. Let's see what the book says. Because I definitely read it as to be fair, almost as if you were you have certain reasons or um, I don't want to say excuses, okay? But you have certain reasons behind why you may want to remain connected to this person or why a certain situation is the way it is or you know. But this can also be speaking about bringing things into balance and creating more stability could also be talking about reciprocation. So balance, justice, and need to consider options, mutual benefits, the law of cause and effect. So you may be asking why are things not reciprocate between you and this person? Why is there this running, this running and chasing? That may be something. Um, why can't it just be balance? And, Again, if you're doing everything that you can to try and pour into this person and give to this person and create stability within the connection, you are not responsible for what the other person does. They're choosing not to. And that has nothing to do with you. That has everything to do with that person. I promise you, okay? That's not to shame that person, but they have their own issues. Clearly with this behavior, it's toxic, it's unhealthy, it's immature, so it has nothing to do with you. This person in a way could be holding you back, not just when it comes to experiencing new relationships or new love, but it's like dead weight. This person may deliberately slow you down, especially because they can see how powerful you really are. Confirmation. So, what was I going to say? There was something else I was going to say. Um, my gosh, now I can't remember. We'll see if it comes back to me. Sorry guys, I had to pause it. So, I remember what I wanted to say. 
I don't know if you guys are twin flamers or not. <laughs> um, I'm not judging you if you are, but there's just something that I'd want you to reflect on and consider because I used to be one and I was a pretty intense one before. I love that combination. Pretty intense one before I was able to really understand and process what it was that I was struggling with and dealing with like at my core, like the wounds that was driving this behavior. So in the twin flame journey thing, you will hear about a runner and a chaser. In this type of unhealthy dynamic, and these relationships, these connections are common, very common, especially nowadays. You'll have somebody that is more anxiously attached and somebody that is avoidantly attached. The anxious person is going to be the person that is very dependent on the other, very codependent on them, and needing more attention, more validation, more reassurance. And again, that usually stems from a certain experience or a certain trauma, a certain wound, and the person may not even realize it and be consciously aware of it. I used to be a very anxiously attached person where I would question everything and I would never feel safe and secure and always felt like something was going on. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> in the connections that I was in, I was right, but at the same time, the behavior that I was exhibiting, it was not healthy. And there were moments where I was really just operating from those triggers, right? And just pushing, pushing, pushing and being clingy and um, again, just needing that validation and basing my worth off of the validation from the other person who would be avoidantly attached, who would be distant, cold, that would just cut themselves off, that would disappear, um, that would not engage sometimes be super hot and then cold for a long period of time, or they would just be um, intense in the beginning and then just never, never again, right? So when you're in that dynamic and you experience that push and pull, especially repeatedly, like we were talking about earlier, it can make you feel crazy. It can make you feel as though you're getting close to something and that's how this person keeps you on a hook because they're deliberately manipulating you. They may not even be aware of their own patterns of behavior, but their manipulation is intentional because they can get what they want from you without putting much effort in. In turn, they can say whatever to keep you around or get you to do things because again, they're preying on your desires and your wishes. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with this person. It's their problem, right? You have your own things you need to work through, right? We all do. We always have something to work on. But this person, like this is their issue and they're holding you back. You've already been working through these things, I feel like, and you already are making progress and you've been growing and maturing and really evolving as a person. But when this individual pops up and when they're in, their, when they're in your life, they set you back. So, are you going to do what is necessary and make the cut in order for your own personal well-being and for your own peace? You have come to the edge. It says courage, taking a leap of faith and overcoming fear and accepting a risk. So yeah, and notice these petals, they look like hearts. So I think this is taking a leap of faith where you put your foot down and you separate yourself from this person even though you may have had these hopes, these dreams, or whatever it is that's holding you back and keeping you from moving forward, whether it's been time, whether it's your age, whether it's whatever, um, just the dynamic between you and this person, history, you're being encouraged to let go and be open to something new because you're not going to receive your fulfillment from this person. And if you hold on to that idea, again, you're holding on to the illusion of what you want this person to be or what they pretended to be, what they sold themselves to be, but what they're showing you is not that person. And just because they have potential and they have the capability to be that person, they're not choosing to be that person. And you can only guide someone so much. 
okay? So that's what I had for you, group two. I'm sorry <laughs> that your reading was kind of intense. And if I came off as blunt, I do apologize. I love you guys so, so much. I just want the best for you. And you deserve so much better than this. Like, you guys don't even understand. But I hope you do soon. And I hope you take that step for yourself and do right by yourself and choose better for you, okay? I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, group three. You guys have so many interferences popping up as I'm trying to record your reading for you. Before we get into the main card, the main energy here, we're looking into the next change that's taking place in your life. What kept coming through is the next 30 days. So this change can be initiated over the next 30 days, um, taking place over the next 30 days, but either way, we're just looking at the next change. So that may or may not resonate for all of you guys, but you have had certain issues, obstacles, blockages that have continuously popped up it feels like when it comes to something you do or when it comes to you being seen like there has been what feels like a barrier an invisible barrier or ceiling something in place that has kept you from really like reaching higher levels you've still been working really hard you've been putting in a lot of effort into something or you've been really dedicated to something but it feels as though you've just been kind of like skirting and skating at the bottom here but what is changing is that you are going to be launching up and you are going to be gaining a lot more attention recognition admiration notoriety you're getting respect here and it feels as though like suddenly with whatever shift is taking place it's like you your energy you're being summoned and you're going to be brought through what feels like a portal where you've been at the bottom and now you're going to be at the top it's like suddenly a lot of eyes are going to be on you you're going to be more popular or something that you do is going to be popularized if you are a business owner this can talk about you having a surge an increase when it comes to your clientele when it comes to sales, if this is regarding your career or certain position, there may be certain deals or opportunities, certain collaborations, people that want to connect with you and work with you. Like you may be getting your foot in really important doors, connecting with and networking with really important people. And that could really change the course of your career path, the direction that you go in. For others of you, if you are a content creator or do something like that, then this can be talking about your art form or your content, your interests, something that you do, something that you create, generating a lot of traction, having a lot of eyes on it. So I do see the pinnacle as a protective symbol as well. But I feel this energy has been building up over time. Maybe there's something here too. Like I don't know why it's making me think of like certain certain things needing to be in place in order for this to be complete, in order for this to happen. So almost like as if it is a ritual, like needing certain. Um, my gosh, <laughs> why is that escaping me? needing certain tools, certain ingredients, having to do things a certain way, having to do them at a certain time. Like, it feels as though there's a certain structure or order to something here when it comes to how this unfolds. Maybe this has to do with just the work and the effort that you've put in but I feel like you are pushing through something and persevering over something, almost as if there was a deliberate or intentional block that was put on you or over you, and now there's this opening up, kind of like a road that is opening up for you. 
Maybe you guys did do a road opener or you would benefit from one or an uncrossing or something like that. Let's take a look at your other cards. You guys have Tulip, Great Passion, okay? Trouble and the Accusations, and you have Vacation. <laughs> oh. Okay, I feel like people are going to be mad. One, with the kite, this is making me think of you guys flying high, right? And again, kites grab people's attention naturally. So it's like you're catching this current, you're catching a wave, and you're going to be soaring with it. Vacation, maybe you're going to have more time to yourself to do whatever it is that you want to do. Maybe you're going to be going on vacation. Living life more freely. Being able to create your own schedule. I feel like this is going to upset people. You have great passion. So again, I think this represents your passion, how passionate you are. But this may even be talking about this change where there's going to be a lot of passion with this change. A lot of passionate energy that is just coming into your life. Now, trouble and accusations. <laughs> I feel, and I don't know why I want to put it over the pinnacle, but I feel like there are people that are going to be bothered by this expansion in general with you soaring up and out like it's going to irritate and it's going to provoke people there may be certain people that try and push you down that try and shut you down um we're going to pull more on this though it could just talk about tension and pressure just people trying to challenge you you have agency and independence. So some of you guys, if you are a musician, you may be going independent. You may be choosing to go independent. I'm getting that. For some of you guys, you could actually be starting or creating your own agency or something of that nature. But in general, this is talking about your own personal success and independence, being able to be solely dependent on yourself, not having to rely on others. Not to say that there's anything wrong with depending on others for support, but like you're finally going to be in a space where you don't feel like you have to do so. And you have roots, healthy patterns, and early growth. So look at all these roots and how far down they go. And though this is right here, like look at how far down they go. With these skulls, I don't know why it's making me think of people that have been around you or observing you for a long time that maybe like witness you at the beginning stage of something or um, in the early stages of something. Maybe they were there when you first created something and it's these people that are irritated, like... <laughs> <sighs> boy, oh boy, okay. Let's get into that. Tell me more about trouble and accusations. What is this? I just heard shifting blame, deflecting responsibility. Seven of swords. Deception, wearing a mask. Not being genuine, hiding something. That's weird. I feel, yeah, you, okay. This came through recently in another reading I did. Might have been the October predictions. I think it was. So, you have someone that is bored, dissatisfied, unfulfilled, too worried about what's going on with you and not concerned enough with their own life. If they wanted to really make a change in their own life, then they should direct their focus to themselves instead of focusing on the changes that are happening with you. They're upset that they're cut off from this. And this is somebody that tried to be disorienting or tried to cast certain illusions 
maybe even with this imagery here, I don't know why it's making me think of somebody that appears one way, like they may come off as supportive, but behind their back, they may be wishing that things fall apart, that they don't work out. The Ten of Swords. Tell me more about trouble and accusations. What is this? Three of Pentacles coming out across. The Ten of Swords. Yep, Three of Pentacles coming out across with the Ten of Swords. Four of Swords. You know what? You guys may be talking about this. You guys may already know about this, where there was somebody that was disloyal, they weren't genuine, um, they could have sabotaged you, betrayed you, backstabbed you. And this could have been somebody that was close to you. Again, somebody that knew you for a long time. And I don't know why I feel like some of you guys who may be talking about this and that may stir this person up and upset them. This may actually be the thing that frees you from this binding. You speaking up and talking about this may actually help you walk through this door. Maybe that's like how you get justice in your own way, speaking up, not being afraid, just like, I just heard setting the record straight. So four of swords, healing, recovery, resting. Pay attention to your dreams. This could have been revealed to you in a dream or it may be revealed to you in a dream, but I think this is more so you just focusing on building yourself back up after some form of betrayal. Not my phone, <laughs> literally turning itself off in the middle of me recording right when I was at the end of your reading. This person, these people, they do not want you to know this. They don't want you to get to this place. And we had that message come through earlier of the past and these people or a particular person maybe having been there when you started something or when you were in the beginning stage of something or maybe they knew you when you were just at a different phase of your life maybe when you were struggling or you were a different type of person and that may even be that energy of accusations the conflict like this person may try and do things to kind of dismiss your success to take away from your growth and be like oh well i knew them when they were like this they're not that person like almost as if they're saying that you're faking that it's a facade it's not real and if this person would just look in the mirror and realize that people can change and just because they haven't changed it doesn't mean other people haven't you know, just because they're the same person, it doesn't mean everybody else is the same as well. Just because they haven't matured doesn't mean nobody else has. It's like, if this person would stop projecting and just look in the mirror, they would realize that they're really just talking about themselves. They put up a front and a facade, and it's all an act. And they're upset that you are genuinely who you are and that you've worked extremely hard to get to where you're at and you're so resilient. And you have been able to build yourself from the ground up time and time again but this time this is where you begin to thrive again i keep getting that word soar this is where you begin to soar the nine of pentacles is tying that energy together that we got regarding you being independent self-sufficient self-made this is like you being a boss being a superstar like somebody that naturally is just in the limelight. Someone that is admired and respected for the hard work and the dedication that they've put in into themselves, into what they love, into their work, whatever the case may be. You have built yourself from the ground up like a rags to riches type of energy 
you stay dedicated even when things didn't seem like they were ever going to change. You stay committed even when it felt like you weren't making progress. You did the inner work to evolve as a person, to change for the better. And this person or these people, they hate it. The Page of Pentacles and the Six of Wands. This may be an idea, something that you're doing, something that you're creating again. Something of yours that is going to launch you into success. And the imagery here, it almost to me would represent you like desiring something, wishing for something, letting it go. And it's like suddenly it all is fulfilled. It all comes pouring in where you suddenly are launched forward. You're riding on this momentum that is just bringing you to higher, higher, higher levels of success. So what is changing for you is you're going from being overlooked to being somebody, I just heard that is overbooked, that's crazy. <laughs> from overlooked to overbooked, you guys are, you're getting everything that you've worked so hard for. So don't let anybody make you think that you're not deserving of it or you're not worthy of it. Like you are inherently worthy in general. But if anybody is deserving of what you're about to receive, it's you because many people would have given up. Many people would have forfeited and quit. This person or these people probably did but you didn't. So you're this Nine of Pentacles. Let's see if there's anything else. And then we will close out. Okay, I get one last card. Actually, I want to pull from the other deck that I grabbed for group two. Let's see. Group three. Tell me about this change. What did I say? Regeneration. Regeneration. Your story is not over. Your story is not finished. You're continuing into a new story, into a new life. You regenerated yourself. Especially after whatever this betrayal, this loss, this destruction, this devastation, whatever it was whether it was something that has accumulated throughout your life, repeated betrayals or trauma or hurt or pain, or again, if it was done by one person or a few people, the same type of energy. This is the most difficult card that you can get in tarot, in my eyes. I think it's one of the most difficult and painful cards that you can get. This is like being dead down and out all these swords in your back, nobody's expecting you to get up. And you made it out. You regenerated yourself. And not only did you make it out, but you're literally coming out on top. You're like a phoenix. And this is making me think of um, Inanna, who descended as a maiden and came out as a goddess. Descended into darkness and came out reborn as a goddess. It's your energy, it's your story, regardless of how you identify, you know, but let's look at the book. Even though I think the message is clear as day, let's look at it anyway, see if there's anything else. Okay, so 46. Rebirth, second chances and new opportunities. Second chances are available to you now. Whatever opportunities you thought were dead are now revived in a more authentic and stronger form. Whatever you may have perceived as a failure or a loss is now being replaced by something better and more powerful growing in its place. This rebirth is assured. Step into your new life. Destiny is being fulfilled in wondrous ways. 
period. That is that. <laughs> and it's funny because you have unfinished symphony that was on the back of the deck and it was just talking about something unfinished or something you thought was a loss or at a dead end. It's not. It's going to be revived. That's what I have for you guys. I love you so, so much. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below. I hope that this helped and I'll see you guys in the next one.